Yo, what's the crack? Today we're gonna make a savage streetwear design in Adobe Photoshop. It's gonna be based on one of the sickest games franchises that there ever was, Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear Solid. We're gonna build up our design with some 3D typography, a little bit of photo bashing, a few gradient maps, and a load of nice nasty texturing. Colonel, what time is it? Oh, it's about 10 past 9. Wrong. What time is it? Time for a bollocking. And come here, check this out. The finished design speaks for itself. It's an absolute whopper. So stick around while we jump into Photoshop and walk you through the whole process. Let's get cracking. Right, so we're gonna crack open Photoshop and we're gonna make an airport. That's the usual A3. That's 4961 by 3508 pixels at 300 DPI. And you're gonna want that 300 DPI if you ever wanna send your design to print. I'm gonna invert my artboard into black and then I'm gonna type out Metal Gear Solid using a nice font I got on it in Vado Elements called Mars Landing. It has that sort of cool Y2K cyberpunky kind of feeling and this game was made in 1997 after all, so I'm gonna try achieve that sort of aesthetic. I then type out my tagline, tactical espionage action in Euro style extension. Extended. Then I'm gonna really notch up the space into about 950 or a thousand and then we're gonna throw these up to the top of the airport and we can worry about them later. After this I'm gonna type out Hideo Kojima's name, he is the director after all. I type out Hideo in Eurostyle Extended Bold, I make that text black and put an internal white stroke on it. Then using a cool classic script font called Brush Script MT, I'm gonna type out Kojima. You've probably seen this font everywhere. I love it, loads of people hate it. I duplicate our Kojima layer, I put one underneath Hideo, and I put one above. I rasterize the one above, and then I rasterize the Hideo layer. I then make a selection of the Hideo layer, click onto our Kojima top layer, and with our eraser tool, I'm just gonna start brushing bits of the Kojima out. I want this to look like the script font is sort of wrapping nicely around these big bold sans serif letters. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool. I then whip out the shape tool and I make a square with a stroke of about 13 on it and no fill. I then duplicate it and with the layer above, I put real nice rounded corners of about 256 on it. I rasterize both of them and then I delete opposing corners, which gives it this real nice shape. I then merge the two of them and that's gonna act as the frame for our figure. I then start taking out all the different photo and 3D assets that we're gonna be using in this. I got most of these off Neostock and I can't recommend Neostock enough. It is literally heaven for a heavy metal designer. They've got some amazing bundles that are serious bang for your buck so I highly recommend going and checking them out. Big shout out to Dean and the rest of the Neostock crew, you guys are lifesavers. Now considering this is fan art for the great Metal Gear Solid, of course we're gonna put Solid Snake in this. I'm gonna use this real cool 3D model here that I got off Neostock. It's got that real cool sneaking suit looking thing on that Snake is known for, so I thought that was a fantastic base to go on. I then used this fantastic set of different heads in different poses that you get on Neostock, and I figured this guy has the jawline that Solid Snake has, so I opted to use this. So I'm gonna use a soft eraser and just loosely kind of feather this in, and I was kind of feeling like that face is gonna work with this pose. Don't know about you guys, but I love replaying through Metal Gear Solid games just using the silencer and the pistol and try not to kill any enemies. So I wanna make this kinda of look like the dark gun with a big L silencer on it, and I figured that this asset that I got off in Vado Elements was the way to go. I just roughly chop off the silencer here and I put it on the gun that the figure is holding, and I just use a little bit of perspective and stuff to kinda of get it lined up and looking nice. And you're thinking, Snake doesn't have a haircut like that, lad, so what are we gonna do? Snake's got a mullet. Well, don't worry, Neostock has you covered here as well. I went on and I got this class PNG of this bonkers hairstyle, which I'm gonna lay over our figure. As you can see, I felt this particular head wasn't quite at the right angle that I wanted, so I just grabbed another one. It's kind of tilted a bit more to the right. I then just use a soft eraser and kind of feathered that in again. Then just use a little bit of nudge and warping just so it was locked in and looked the business. And as you can see, the haircut fits this head much better. So I've just used a hard eraser to kind of rub bits out so the ears sticking out and it kind of sits a little more natural on the head. Got this real cool cyberpunk look and gun off Neostock as well. I thought it had a savage laser on it and lasers always reminded me of Metal Gear so, so I decided I'd throw this in too. Just kind of messing around with the perspective and stuff to get it sitting nicely. And I think a lot of these details are going to be covered with our noise and gradient maps so I wasn't really, you know, kicking myself and stressing myself out with this. This is all kind of nice and quick and loose. I did the same here with the clip of the gun just to kind of busy it up. Now of course it's not Solid Snake without a bandana to keep those locks in. So I got this mad looking pirate skull off in Vado Elements and I just basically took the bandana off it. I'm using a combination of the hard razor and the lasso tool, the free lasso tool, just to chop it out. And once I had it laid over Snake's head, by eye I just went in with the liquify tool and I really wanted to give this a little bit more of that anime feeling so I got very expressive with my strokes here and really elongated it and got it looking dramatic. Then I just played with my levels and brightness and contrast to kind of get it like mashed in nicely. Then grabbed their hair layer and I went back into the liquify tool and went full anime again. 
I just went mad for it and just gave him a real big long mullet and a few spiky bits on top because it looks sick, you know what I mean? This is a solid snake after all. He's one of the most iconic looking lads. These tools are quite nice as well because you can keep going back and forward and kind of make things look a bit funkier and a bit more dramatic if you feel like it. I then used the smudge tool just to drag bits of the hairs out and give it that real spiky look and solid snake look. As always, go big or go home. Here you can see him going even more overboard with the bandana. Then got our brush tool and just grabbed the black background color and with 0% softness, I just drew like on a nice shadow underneath the bandana. Let's face it, Snake always has that dark menacing look in his eyes, doesn't he? Again, I made sure the ear was popping over the bandana here to give it that three dimensional depth and to make it look like it actually is a photograph of the lad. And in all Metal Gear games, what do you start off with? You start off with nothing but a packet of cigs. So I threw a cigarette into Snake's mouth that I got off in Vado Elements and used a nice smoke overlay to make it look like the cig is lit. I then used a hard eraser and our burn tool to kind of make it look like there's a bit of shadow between his lips and the butt. To further play on that real dramatic character design of the unbelievable Yoji Shikawa that designed all the concept art for the Metal Gear games, I went in and gave him a real nice pointy kind of chin and a pointy nose using our liquefied tool again. You can go really overboard with this, so I was trying to stay quite grounded, but at the same time, I did want that real classic anime look. Just be careful when you're playing with the liquefied tool, because you can absolutely ruin things. But listen, let's face it, we've all got control all set to fix all our problems here. Now to busy up the background within our frame, I got this unbelievable render of these like mad looking iridescent chains. And this is in the Dread Renders pack from Tom from Dread Labs. I'm going to link that in the description and you can go support him and support his channel. Absolutely deadly stuff. I then grouped all the layers of snake into one folder just so we can keep them aside and we can kind of play with them if we, if we need to. I then duplicated that group and I merged them all onto one layer, then played around with Refine Edge just to tighten up our contrast on the edges, and then I decided to throw a little drop shadow on it just to break up the figure from the background itself. Just gives it a little bit more depth to the image. After that I got our frame layer and I put like a nice thick stroke on it of about 13 to 21 pixels, just so our frame is further broken up from the image within it. I then rasterized our Metal Gear Solid type layer, made a new artboard that's an A3 as well, copied and pasted it onto that artboard. But then went into 3D and made a 3D extrusion layer, and that's gonna give this a real cool looking effect on the typography. I then tilted it up on the Y axis, and I really pushed up the extrusion depth to about like 300-400 pixels to give it that proper cool perspective. Then I basically just rasterized our 3D layer, and then copied and pasted it back into our main artboard, and as you can see, it looks so damn cool. Then I just played around with the vertical height and extended it a little bit, just so it's a little bit bolder and bigger, because this is gonna be the hierarchy of the image. Then just using my magic wand tool, I grabbed the white parts of the letters and I copied and pasted them onto a new layer themselves. I then refined edge on the 3D layer below it and put an internal white stroke on it. Then with our white part of our letters, I went into our layer style and I went into bevel and emboss. Put a nice smooth bevel on it of about like a thousand percent depth just to give it a nice shiny metallic look. I then put a soft inner shadow on it and then it went into inner glow and I kind of wanted to make it like nice and blue, you know, the typical Metal Gear colors, even though that's a Metal Gear Solid 2 color. After that I went into a gradient overlay and I put like a reflected gradient on it to give it that super classic chrome. And yeah, I was pretty happy with how that looked. So I just started playing around with our vertical height again, trying to make it a bit bigger and bolder. Putting some more stroke on the letters to break up the 3D part and the chrome part of the letters themselves. And I was thinking, yeah, that's looking pretty nice. I definitely felt like the shiny chroming of the lettering sort of played off the iridescence of the dread renders change that we used within the image. I then started farting around with the same sort of treatment for the Hideo Kojima part of the logo, and I opted to go a little bit more subtle with that, but still with the nice shiny beveling on it and a cool gradient. After that, I started playing around with some PNGs of different logos that are sort of associated with the game. Considering this is just gonna be fan art because like, I'm not gonna be selling this, this is Metal Gear Solid. You can't sell anything that's like an existing IP. So because of that, I just figured oh, I'll just grab a few PNGs of Dolby Digital, the Konami logo, and the M rating logo, because they are all sort of associated with the PS1 game. And I just sort of like mess around with the placement and the layout here a bit, all while tidying up my layers, kind of notching up contrast, playing with our levels, playing with the smoke, kind of making a break out of the frame a bit for a bit of crack, and then just tightened up things to make them kind of nicely aligned. Then with Eurostyle Bold, I put Konami Computer Entertainment Japan 1998 just down underneath the Hideo Kojima logo. And I kind of played around with some stroke over that. I kind of got it nicely tightened up and looking cool because this is going to be the footer of our logo. As you can see here, I'm just kind of thinking on my feet and I was really feeling out this design as I went along. As always, sometimes I find less is more. So I find it useful just to kind of throw everything onto the artboard at once. Fire it around with things, throw around different placements and stuff 
and then take things away as you see fit. It's much easier to pare back a design that way and get it looking nice rather than going way too over the top and having loads of stuff in it. Then using the same font family, Eurostyle Bold, I just wrote written, directed and produced by Hideo Kojima. Because let's face it, without that man we wouldn't have these games and they are some of the best games there ever was. After this I was fairly happy with the composition, I just got my guidelines out and I just started making sure things were nicely tight and aligned. And once I was happy that I just made sure to save this. Don't be like me, sometimes I only save about an hour or an hour and a half into a design and I'm like, god damn, why did I do that? There was 10 different things I would have changed, but sure. So after I was happy with the layout, I whacked everything onto one layer and merged them all. I then just started playing with my contrast and brightness to kind of get it a little bit more dramatic looking. And then once I was happy with that, we were going to throw a nice gradient map over it. I played around with a quite cool sort of predator vision gradient map here. If you want to use this gradient map, just pause the video and take down the hex codes of all the different colors I use. Because it is really cool looking and you can apply it to anything. It gives it that sort of thermal goggle vision looking effect. As you can see, I was sort of playing with my sliders to see where I want the colors to fall themselves because I didn't want the red to overpower the rest of the design. Then when I thought the gradient map was quite cool, I started playing with my levels and my brightness and contrast of the snake layer itself. And as you can see, when you're changing the whites and the blacks there, it'll affect the colors in the gradient map itself. So you have a lot of control over what you're doing just by playing with the grays. I then grabbed our frame and our logo layer and I merged them together. I whacked up the contrast on them. Then with our color selection tool, I just selected all the black and deleted it. Then with those merged layers, I made a new layer, made a selection of them, and I used a nice icy blue as a color overlay to give it that cool Metal Gear Solid feeling. And after that, I just started playing with our hue and saturation sliders until I got a nice kind of color that I thought was looking the business. As you can see, I chop and change here quite a bit, and I'm really sort of thinking on my feet. I've got a few bad edges and some artifacting that I wasn't too happy with, so I got rid of them with a refined edge. But before that, I went in and added some noise, and I used a Gaussian noise monochromatic, and about 21% is the amount. Even after that, I started playing with my hue and my saturation again. And I kept kind of going back and forth on whether I wanted it to be green or I wanted it to be blue. But in the end, I just thought it looked sweet the way it was. I then duplicated that layer. I went into my blending options and I turned off green in the layer. Then I just nudged the whole thing about 10 pixels to the left, 10 pixels up. And that gives it that nice RGB bend that you kind of see in VCRs and old videos and that type of thing. I was sort of playing on the late 90s sort of vibe here. After I was happy with that, I just started messing around with the curves to kind of get a bit more drama into the colors. I then made a new layer. I filled that with an icy blue and I used screen as our blend mode. I then made a selection of all the black on the layer below, clicked onto our blue layer and deleted it, just so the whole thing had that class looking icy kind of sheer over. And after the chaos of all of that, we are done and dusted. So there we have it, the nice Metal Gear Solid streetwear design. I'm real chuffed with how that turned out. It looked absolutely sick in the end. But you can really see in this video just how chaotic my workflow can be. It is really just like vomiting stream of consciousness design. But please use these tutorials more so as guidelines to get the juices flowing for you. I have so many bad habits that I've developed over the years and I know there's a hundred ways I could have done this far better and far cleaner. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, I hope you really enjoy that. Oh, it's so much fun making that. I love those games. I seen a thing recently, an Irish singer wrote a song for a remake of a big PS1 game. And oh my God, I'm really hoping it's gonna be a remake of Metal Gear Solid 1, a boy can dream. So as always, give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed that and if you found it useful. I've left a few assets in the folder in the description down below and you can use them for all your projects going forward. So thanks again, guys. You're all absolute legends. I hope Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.